welcome to my presentation on insulin pumps. This is just a short video designed to go over what you need to know for the exam, uh, which is just usually uh, some basic information. Uh, but there's usually at least one or maybe even two insulin pump questions on the exam. So this is just meant to be a very introductory video uh, meant for people with little or no experience with insulin pumps. If you're already a certified pump trainer, then this video is too basic for you. And so I'm going to have three objectives and I'm going to divide this video into three parts. So with the first part, I'm going to show you the mechanics of an insulin pump how it works, and I'm going to show you how to put one on. In the second part, I'm going to contrast uh, insulin infusion, continu continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion, which is done through an insulin pump, versus multiple daily injections, which is done through an insulin pen. And then third, I just want to briefly go over some of the insulin calculations and tips that you would do with an insulin pump. Yeah. So let's begin. So this is a Medtronic pump. This is an older version, uh, but the newer versions just have a color display here. So how it works is that there's actually a piston right here. That piston pumps, pushes out onto the reservoir, and it acts just like an insulin pen. You know how like the piston in the insulin pen pushes on the cartridge, and that pushes out the insulin. The same thing here, that's the piston that pumps out the insulin from the, from the insulin reservoir, which I'll show you in just a second. So, uh, but an insulin pump can be a lot more specific. This guy here can pump out at 0.025 units per hour. And that's just not possible to do with, uh, with an insulin pen. Um, also note that it is battery operated, right here. Here is the battery right here. And so it is important that you don't get it wet, and that you uh, watch for your battery battery power. So let me. So this is the insulin pump itself. Let me show you the reservoir. So this is a insulin pump reservoir. And you know it's funny when I used to work in Safeway, I had a couple of insulin pump patients, and I'd be handing them this stuff all the time, but I had no idea what was inside. Let's get things closer. So this is the part which I'm going to fill with insulin, but I'm just going to do it with saline today, and then I'm just going to insert it onto myself. Let me see here. This, okay, also note that with insulin, insulin pumps, uh, it only uses rapid-acting insulin. You do not use short-acting insulin, you do not use intermediate uh, in, acting insulin, you do not use long-acting analogs in insulin pumps. It is only an absolutely rapid acting insulin. Um, that's because a pump is designed to kind of act like a normal pancreas. A normal pancreas doesn't inject 100 units of lantus subcutaneously and wait, waits for it, waits there for it to dissolve into the bloodstream. A pancreas is actually uh, secreting insulin a couple units at a time depending on how high the, how high the blood sugars are. So uh, so yeah, the insulin pumps only use rapid acting insulin. The next piece here is the infusion set. This is a piece that actually goes into, into me. And I'll show you how to do that in just, just a sec. I wanna open this up and show you. That it consists of the reservoir cap, which is here. And there's actually a needle there, which will actually go into me and then come out. And then a soft, soft uh, part of it actually stays inside of me. And that's where the insulin drips into uh, my subcutaneous tissue. So notice that is, you know, it's a long flexible tube, but here, here with the tube and there inside with the tube that goes uh, into my subcutaneous tissue, there's a possibility that it can get kinked. So what I mean by kinked is that when it just kinks up like this or so. And then that actually stops the uh, insulin infusion. And that's actually a real danger because you're using only rapid acting insulin. And so that patient who has type one diabetes 
they could go into DK quite uh, quite rapidly because they're only using rapid acting insulin. They're not on a locket, long acting insulin. Remember, with this reservoir, only rapid acting insulin goes in there. Okay, so give me a few minutes as I fill this up. So this is the reservoir. I'm recording, am I? Yes. Uh, here's the reservoir. I'm just going to use the saline here, but you can pretend this is a vial of insulin, of Humalog or a or whatever. So just snap that open. Um, now here's my alcohol swab. Make sure I don't give myself an infection right before the exam. So I'm just cleaning it like so. And how this guy works is that there's a needle here and this just punctures in like so. Okay, now there's a stopper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly fill that up with insulin. So you can see that I'm slowly filling it up with insulin. Probably should have put some air in there to make it easier. And you can see there's a mark here. I'm going to fill that up to the 1.8 millimeter range. Oopsies. So as you can see, there's some bubbles and I'm just going to try to get rid of them. So you can see here, I filled it up to the 1.8 mil mark. And now all you have to do to disconnect it is you tug here, and it comes off by itself. And this part you can, this part is just a double-sided needle. See, needle on both sides. Which you can, you shouldn't keep it on the inside thing. Now the second thing you do with the reservoir is you disconnect it here. Okay. So this piece goes into here. And remember, because uh, this, this part you can push out, and remember here, that's the piston that's slowly pushing out, going, and you can program that to go as fast as several units per hour or as little as 0 0.25 units per hour. So that goes into here. And then this guy here, there's another needle here. Here's the infusion set that I was talking about connects onto there and then locks it in, okay? So uh, before I connect this onto myself, there's actually a bunch of air in the tubing and here, which, uh, which I don't want in my subcutaneous tissue. So as you can see on the instructions, it's leaking right now. Uh, as you can see on the instructions, it says to fill the tube, which I'm going to do now. And if you look closely, you should be able to see some drops. There we go. I don't know if you can see it with the video, but a bunch of drops just fell down. And yes, and liquid body after, yes. Okay, so now I need to connect this onto my body. Um, let me see where my notes are. So, so I can connect this part onto, usually it's the abdomen. Uh, insulin pumps can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, insulin pumps can go anywhere that uh, it, you do insulin with, uh, with insulin pens. Uh, so you could do it on the back, I could do it on the back of my arm, I could do it on my buttocks, I could do it on my legs here. But usually it's uh, in the abdomen, just kind of like insulin pens as well. So, I am going to set this up. Okay, uh, I want to go over one thing too. Uh, different infusion sets have different insertion angles. So what I mean by that is for this particular infusion set, this goes straight down. So it's a 90 degree angle. And say I have this much subcutaneous tissue goes right into here. Um, yes, now, so this, this, infusion set because it goes 90 degrees is suitable for me 
because I have a lot of subcutaneous tissue. I don't, as my wife likes to say, I don't have six pack abs. And uh, so I can use an insertion device that goes 90 degrees. If I did have six pack abs, I would use an insertion device that, ha that goes in at a 30 degree angle, say. Because if I don't have this much subcutaneous tissue and I have only this much, I, this would insert into a muscle, which we don't want. We actually want something that goes like so at a 30 degree angle. So this particular one, you can see this one goes down at a 90 degree angle. This one here, I don't know if you can see it, but this actually goes at a 30 degree angle. Um, and it's quite a long tube. So it just goes underneath the skin, goes down at a 30, de 30 degree angle, and just sits there underneath the skin because for people who are very lean, say you have a child with type one, this wouldn't, uh, the 90 degree wouldn't work. You need the 30 degree one. Okay, so to put this, this guy on, you just put, this is the inserted device. It's just like so, and then like so. It's very similar to the Libra device, actually. Just like so, and then like so, okay? And so what you do is, I'm inserting it here like so. Let me get this. Okay, so typically this stuff is really sticky. You make bunny, you, uh, you call them bunny ears, like so. You can push it in and remove the adhesive. Okay. And then most importantly, you need to get rid of this thing that protects me there. And there you go. That's what it looks like inside. There's the needle and I'm going to insert this right now. As you can, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see there's drops on it already. That means that the tubing has been filled and not injecting into air, any air into my cell. Okay, yeah. so just like with an insulin pump, you want to avoid the belly button area and about you know, an inch, half an inch away. So you just put it like so. And press the button, pull out. There's the needle. Uh, there we go. There. Can you see that? There. there. There's the needle that it gets pulled out. This I fold. Make sure I don't poke myself. And as you can see, that insulin infusion is there. Okay, and now I can use this machine. So I just, you know, tuck my shirt in, put it in my pocket. And as soon as I put it in my pocket, well, you know, it comes sort of discreet. I guess you can see this tube here, but if I put it closer over here, it's actually pretty discreet. You might not even, you might not notice it. And um, yeah, and so then you can program this guy to uh, do bolus insulin. There's a bolus wizard calculation similar to the insulins. Uh, you can set it at different infusion rates and uh, and different at different times. This is the this is the summary of all the functions that you can do. So you can see it's pretty complicated. Um, you know, sometimes I've got seniors who come see me and say, oh, well, hey, I heard about that insulin pump. I want to use it. Uh, and depending on how good they are with technology, I, I, you know, I'll recommend it or not uh, for type, type one seniors. Uh, but generally, my general rule is that if they are not able to use a smartphone, then generally you, in my opinion, you can't, you, you can't use these. Um, you do need these to function correctly or else you could go into DKA. And I'm going to talk more about that in the next section of my video. So uh, just again, just to review, you know, it is battery powered, so you need to keep it uh, out of water. If you do need it, if you did want to go for a swim or something like that, all you need to do is disconnect it like so. As you can see, you can disconnect it like so. 
that you can maybe see a little drop right there and then reconnect it like that after the shower or the swimming. So I'm going to just going to take this out and show you See, you can see a little drop of water there. Um, here is what was sticking inside me. And so if that gets kinked, just like any kink here, that could stop insulin flow. And that's bad news because then, you know, you have people, usually people with type one diabetes on these devices. And so that can lead into DKA quite quickly. So I'm going to stop the video here. And um, I'll, in the next part, I'll talk about uh, insulin pumps and continu continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion, CSII for short, versus MDI, multiple daily injections with insulin pumps. All right, thanks for watching and I'll be right